Hi, my name is Maria Elisa Ayerbe, and I'm here to present a mix I did using only plugins from the mega bundle from Plugin Alliance. The track that I'm going to be working on is called Vete. It is a collaboration between my dear good friends Daniel, Renee, and Sammy Hawk. It is a reggaeton track in Spanish. It is a very sexy track. Very simple, yet very, very cool and very provocative. Let's check out and see what I did. Okay, so this is the track. It's very simple. Everything was programmed. Mainly nothing was recorded except for the vocals, obviously. Everything was programmed by Daniel Rene. Daniel, who's also uh, the main performer of this track, wrote the song, produced it, and programmed it. Uh, and then Sammy Hawk, who's a, a pretty amazing rapper here in Miami, collab and, and took um, the, the lead uh, verse on the rap. Let's check out uh, the track and then we'll move forward and analyze um, section by section. Traes la cabeza en los pies Todo al revés Lo imaginé esta situación Poco a poco y muy lento Cambiando uno por otro Inteligentemente Dime, dime por qué yo Por qué yo sigo extrañando tu amor Que extraño tu amor Dime, dime por qué yo Por qué yo No aguanto tu traición Nunca me dejas entrar Déjame entrar, solo sabes engañar Invista amar, deja, déjate llevar Déjate llevar O búscate otro yo Vete si te va a querer Te va a querer Como yo te quise ayer Vete si te va a querer Te va a querer Como yo te quise ayer Te quise ayer yeah, yeah, yeah. Dudo que él te quiera como yo Quise, dudo que él te lo haga como yo, te lo hice por la noche y por los mañaneros. Pa' mí todo el año era 14 de febrero. Ey, en la ducha y hasta en el comedor. En el carro y hasta en el ascensor. A veces suavecito, a veces hardcore. Él solo sabe el misionero y ver televisor. Uh, por el Insta, no te sigo. Si sabes con talla, no cuentes conmigo. Me cansé de ser tu juguete. Otra de venir mientras tú mejor, tú mejor, tú mejor. Vete si te da querer. Si te va a querer Como yo te quise ayer Como ayer, como ayer Vete si te va a querer Te va a querer Como yo te quise ayer Como te lo hice más Te quise ayer Como te quise ayer The other day you told me That I would never find anyone else like you That's the idea Tu amor, tu chico, lo quiero me va matando y no aprendo, desbaratando por dentro, tengo la cabeza en los pies. Vete si te da a querer, right away from me. te da a querer, yeah. como yo te quise ayer, Dile. te quise ayer. Como yo. Vete si te da a querer, uh -huh. te da a querer, como, como yo. yo te quise ayer, yeah. te quise yeah. ayer. Me yeah. gusta al revés, no sé cuándo, por qué te falla ya usted. Viva su vida, ya me cansé, óyeme que del parque otra vez la saque Esa mi hija junto a Daniel René ¡Pum! Cool, so it is a pretty straightforward track as you see Like the sections are pretty well defined But one thing that I noticed and it caught right away when I received this track It's like the bass comes halfway through the song And that is usually something that is highly unusual for a reggaeton track Where usually the beat drops on the chorus or even in the pre-chorus Like the bass needs to kick in this is like an in-between point between a ballad and a dance rhythm song. So that being said, number one, the vocal has a lot of protagonism. Um, and then this is when I always talk about like being a mixer is more than just uh, dropping down the plugins or just dropping out whatever you need to do on the EQ and put in the gear and then call it a day and make it sound good. You also have to understand where the artists are coming from. Daniel Renee's entire career has been as a lead vocal singer and he's got this huge voice he's capable of doing all these runs here and there so 
first of all, I need to focus on the vocal. The vocal is going to be the center of my mix. It's where I'm going to put the most attention to. But then I have to also think about, and this is, as I say, you always have to think this before you're building the mix. So there is no bass and there is the beat and very few other spaced out elements here and there. So I have to do something to compensate for the fact that the bass drops halfway through the song. So thinking about that, I'm going to work first in the vocal and I'll show you what I did with the vocals and the special treatment I gave it. And then I'm going to move on and show you what I did to the kick and then to the bass. So that way, basically, that's how I built the entire mix around those three elements. Everything else is just like shiny sparkles here and there. But focusing on those three elements, I was able to come through this entire mix. OK, so Let's show first what I have on the master. This is the finalized version. And when you receive this session or project, whichever DAW you're going to find out, you're going to notice that I have all of these plugins dropped on here. Usually the first plugin I drop in this specific slot is going to be the AB metric because in this spot, I'm going to be dropping the reference mix always sent by the artist or production because my first job is beating the demo, right? And at the same time, using not as a competence, but always like they're hiring me as a mixing engineer. I want to make sure that whatever I do, the quality of my production is above that. But also because I'm going to be A, being the whole time, not only for different cues and how the individual elements are placed here around the mix, but also because I'm going to be changing between spectrum correlation and dynamics and loudness just to understand how the song was conceived by the production. But also I'm going to use the other slots and I'm going to put them so that I'm dropping songs that I have worked on in the past, either mixed or mastered. And I'm also dropping commercial references in here. So by A being everything, I am just comparing and having all these quick references and access to all of this all of the time. So this is literally the first plugin that I put in. And funny enough, is the one that I put on the last spot. For everyone who doesn't know, we're always working against something and that is called the streaming algorithm, right? We're talking about that whatever I do, it's going to be subject to all sorts of different alterations because uh, our songs are going to go to YouTube, they're going to go to Spotify, and we got to remain objective that we are mixing for that medium, specifically nowadays, more than CD, or maybe you're going to be doing um, vinyl. And so, but then again, what I'm going with this is that SBL Hawkeye is one of the top meters available on the market. You have the spectrogram, you have LU target, you have true peak, which is really, really important. You have your balance, your correlation. So, so that I'm constantly watching those two plugins all the time and have one eye in the plugin and just looking at how I am building my mix from scratch so that I keep enough dynamic range as I am putting all of the elements. And then at the end, I squash everything together just to hit that loudness point where the entire music industry is going to the louder, the better, right? Having said that, I am not one of those engineers who mixes to a limiter. I really can't do that. I understand a lot of my colleagues work like that and it's amazing how they do it. But I, I, I come from a different school where I learned how to get really loud before I actually drop a limiter. So I have this amazing plugin in here, which is my true big limiter, which works amazingly well. And, and I'll have this at loud at minus eight so that this is the plugin that I'll be using for the reference that I'll be sending and sharing with my clients. And then just to watch it, I'm getting super loud, but then I'll change the parameters so I'm a little bit softer on that for when I'm sending to the mastering engineer. But the options in this one are amazing, the, how you can do the tone control, how you can add that extra whatever sorcery happens on the Excel algorithm from the entire BrainWorks line, which is great. But I won't mix to that. I'll keep it off. Same with this one, which I also love because you can do mastering. The MS mastering limiter is amazing. You can do different limiters between the, your mids and your sides, and it separates the lows and the high. And it's a great way to get super loud without over crushing your mix. But that one, I'll keep it also off in the meantime. I'll have in here a little bit of harshness control. The BX Master Desk, which I use a compressor, is also great. I'll keep it off. And then tone control also with my Amec. I'll keep it off as well. And I'll be mixing to the black box and the townhouse boss compressor, which I'll set up first. And then you'll notice that I'll be clipping my master all the time while I'm mixing. That's OK, because I understand that I have all of these other plugins where I can drop down and you'll see it when you open up the session. You see the my output gain is at minus three. And then when I open up the master desk, my volume level is at minus five. So that is a way that I can get about 
controlling, not clipping on my way out. That way, when I drop my True Peak limiter, I don't have to put so much pressure on the limiter to avoid clipping. Let's go ahead and talk about the vocals. So Daniel Rene recorded different vocals for different sections in here, which I appreciated very much. So what I did in here, let's solo. Tras la cabeza en los pies, todo al revés. Lo imaginé esta situación. So I'm using SSL 9000J, which I love for vocals. I love for everything, 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 absolutely everything. I'm doing a little bit of tone control in here. I'm doing some compression, some dynamics and some filters. And then I drop this de which is pretty great because it has two different bands. And I always use either two de or just the SPL duo band, which is incredibly smart. You have a high band for your higher range of your SS, which... For me, it's like about 9,000 hertz and like all the way to 13K. And the that lower portion, which lies between 2 and 4, 5K, which I always say in Spanish, we have different S's. So our S's are more like, like this, so it can go on the lower part of the range. So this is a great plugin for that because it handles both. And it's just great. And you can also work it on MS in case you have a stereo track, like, for example, the one I have below. So it's a little bit of tone control with compression, just tackling the vocal so it feels very packed. La cabeza en los pies, todo al revés, lo imaginé esta situación. A little bit of a uh, high air, a little bit of a uh, control of that rumble in here and there. Not nothing, nothing too fancy. Also because he recorded himself with a great mic and he knows how to record vocals pretty well. Things that we have way out of our control as mixing engineers, but we appreciate very much. And then um, the answer, and then this plugin, which is amazing, acoustic enhancement. So you can have all the way from like creating this pass effects between your speakers, all the way to recreating rooms or like reverbs or delays or slaps. But with this vocal, what it does is just it, it opens it up to this like stereophonic field type of thing because this track was initially mono. So I'll show you what it does before and after. Tras la cabeza en los pies, todo al revés, lo imaginé esta situación. Poco a poco y muy lento, cambiando uno por otro. So I'm basically creating a little bit of this Haas effect or like enhancing the presence and the, and the stereophonic width of the vocal without actually having to create like a, like a double or something. It's just a little bit of facing as and a little bit of spread, which creates more presence. Because again, this is the center of my mix, so I want it to be wider. All of this obviously is going to two cents, the delay at a quarter note and the reverb. And for those, I am using two really great plugins as well. So on the verb, I got this BX Room MS, which is pretty cool because you have MS. I don't have it on, but I'm using this parameter. So anything that's below 80 hertz is going to go monophonic on the reverb. I'm having just a basic reverb. And I also have an EQ and you can get really crazy and just like enhance the stereo width of your reverb when you're creating like this crazy reverb effects. I'm trying to keep it really simple, but the fact that you have so many options, like thinking about doing MS on a reverb is just amazing. And then the unfiltered audio delay of quarter notes, very simple, sync to the tempo of the song. Tempo of the song is 97. Always remember to include that when you're working on a mix. I have a, a low pass in there, so it's cutting off frequencies at 4.49 kilohertz. I don't know, I worked that by ear. Pretty simple, but immediately there is a presence there. But check it out. I'm also sending a little bit of that quarter note delay to the reverb. So it, that's why it sounds so wide and so open, mixed with stage acoustic enhancement from Fiedler Audio. It creates this amazing presence on the vocal. Tras la cabeza en los pies, todo al revés. So literally, that's the first thing that I work on. So this is the first verse. The second verse, they send me this stereo track. And I'm going to mute everything that I got in here first so you can hear the... There is like this phasiness, which... Daniel really wanted for the pre-chorus when it gets pretty interesting just to give it a distinct tone to the vocal. Dime, dime, porque yo 
¿Por qué yo sigo extrañando tu amor? ¿Qué extraño tu amor? Dime, dime, ¿por qué yo? ¿Por qué yo? So the tone is really different from that. So the first thing that I did, well, I added a little bit of compression dime, here. Dime, ¿Por qué yo? ¿Por qué yo? Si Just to tame the peaks. Then I went ahead because I felt it needed to be a lot more packed than the other one. Then I added same SSL 9000 just for tone control and a little bit more dynamics and filters. Then same de -esser. And then finally, I added this really cool tape delay just to create, enhance that faceness that they wanted from this vocal, just so it feels like doubled. Dime, dime, por qué yo, por qué yo sigo extrañando tu amor, que extraño tu amor, dime, dime, por qué yo, por qué yo. No aguanto tu traición, nunca me dejas entrar, déjame entrar. So it feels like it's coming from somewhere else. I just love that it. it felt really great. And I am adding a little bit of the delay, not the reverb anymore, because I felt like the reverb was cool for the intro, but not for this section. Dime, dime, por qué yo, por qué yo sigo extrañando tu amor, que extraño tu amor, dime, dime, dime. Cool. So that's it. It's pretty straightforward. Then we move on to the chorus. And in the chorus, I basically did the same thing. Same plugins here and there. I believe this one is a little bit more open, but I don't remember. And a little bit of delay and verb. So it sounds pretty much the same, but I really appreciate the fact when vocal producers separate the track so you have the freedom to do automations and do all sorts of crazy things separated and change filters and that between the sections of the song. So that's a great tip for, for producers. All of my background vocals are going straight to this background. This is like this master right now. And in this one, I'm also throwing the SSL 9000, the DSer. But in this one, I love how in this preset called Vocal Bright and White from The Better Maker, obviously I've tweaked some stuff around. It takes that mid-side thing and it just widens it up and it creates this super full presence, which I appreciate a lot. So check out how it sounds. For example, these two. It's just like it goes like whoosh. And it's all with um, EQ. It's amazing. I always encourage people to use when you don't know a new plugin or you don't understand how it works around because all of these have different ways of presenting things here and there. Just go through the presets and, and then just tweak around because you're going to get wherever you go faster and, and you can get super creative and you can explore things that you've never thought about. That's exactly what happened with this Better Maker. It sounds great. It's just beautiful. So I love that. And I created a different reverb for BGVs as well. For this one, I am using the BX delay, which is great and a very simple parameter. And I just created like this wide width effect in here and there. Nothing too fancy, but it provided a great solo depth effect for these background vocals. Okay, so let's explore a little bit of what I did uh, with Sammy's vocal. It's very, also very straightforward. I got the stereo maker in here because I thought I wanted to also give, since I'm giving that spaciousness to uh, Daniel Renee's vocal, I thought I might do something similar, but I thought I did it in another fashion. So I used the stereo maker, which is a very simple way of making a mono track go stereo, but you can focus it on a frequency. So let's check out how this sounds like with and without. Yeah, 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 dudo que él te quiera como yo Te quise, dudo que él te lo haga como yo Te lo hice por la noche y por los mañaneros Pa' mí todo el año era 14 de febrero Ey, en la So also, it gives like this sense of depth and it's focused around 100 hertz, which is the lower, lower part of his vocal. So it just adds a little bit of tone to it, which I thought worked pretty well. And then in this section in here, just a very simple EQ, very straightforward with that SPL tone, which is great. Everything is running to this main Sammy auxiliary, which I'm, I have everything running to this sort of a Neve emulation for Lindell 80 plugins, tone and tone control, a compressor, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dudo crazy. que te quiera como yo. Te quise. Dudo que te lo haga como yo. Te lo hice por la noche y por los mañaneros. Pa mi It gives it that extra push forward, right? And, and especially that high end over here with around 12k or so with that vocal which is very important so that the vocal cuts through with a little bit of compression not too much going on you can see it here on the game yeah, production yeah yeah dudo que te quiera como yo te quise dudo que te lo haga como yo te lo hice por la and from that i'm doing a secondary compression using the purple audio which is great because it's super fast it catches the transition super naturally 
Yeah, 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 dudo que él te quiera como yo Te quise, dudo que él te lo haga como yo Te lo hice por la noche y por los mañaneros Pa' mí todo el año era 14 But as you can see, it is running parallel So I love the fact that this bottom half on the Brainworks plugins Not only because you get the TMT, which is that beautiful added analog tone to it But also because you can work it as a parallel Instead of having to have an additional parallel bus I love that, it's great, it works pretty well on top of that, oh, this is great. This, a little bit of saturation, you're going to notice the difference right away. Super recommended. Yeah, 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 dudo que él te quiera como yo Te quise, dudo que él te lo haga como yo Te lo hice por la noche y por los mañaneros Pa' mí todo el año era 14 de febrero Ey, en la ducha y hasta en el comedor En el carro y hasta en el ascensor A veces suavecito, a veces... Nice, right? Mind you, and it's very important, I'm going to lower my master because I am definitely hearing that distortion, but I told you, like when, when I am mixing at the very initial stage, I am making sure, you, you could see that those red lights in there, I am making sure that I am not clipping when I mute all of those. Okay, moving forward. We have the dual band deasser, which is great for everything that is the same thing. In this case, I... I changed the algorithm. I just thought that male, female, it was going to work better for Sammy's vocal. Just a simple thing here and there. And I also added, but with a different parameter than on Daniel's, I added the stage acoustic enhancement from Fiddler Audio, but I changed the parameters so the bit depth on Sammy's vocal was different than on Daniel's. Dudo que te lo haga como yo Te lo hice por la noche y por los mañaneros Pa' mí todo el año era 14 de febrero Ey, en la ducha y hasta en el comedor En el carro y hasta en el ascensor A veces suavecito It's just that extra enhancement on the sides, which I love And then I have a different combination of uh, reverb and then delays That gives it like a different tone and different characters So when his vocal jumps in He's on a different stereophonic field than Daniel Which I pretty much like Cool, so that was basically everything that I'm doing with Sammy. Something else, there was a printed vocal on that, which has a phone effects, which I... The other day you told me that I would never find anyone else like you. <laughs> That's the idea. I didn't really do pretty much anything on that one because it, it came prepared. That's the great thing of working with really great producers. Just mind you that if you feel like you need to enhance something, obviously you got to do that. Let's move on to the kick then. So... This is how the kick sounds without any processing. So I like it, but I still feel like because the, it's the only element, percussive, important element that is going on this first section of the song. Dime, dime, porque yo, porque yo sigo like it lacks depth, it lacks presence, it lacks body, it lacks just humph overall. The Big Owl is just saturation at its best. And I like the fact that you can really hit that drive and you can hit it on the level. But at the same time, you have that mix knob so you can select how much you want of it. So let's see with and without it. Dime, dime, porque yo... So see if I overdo it, it's going to start like distorting in the not so cool way. So having it on parallel, and again, this is a this is one of those parameters that I experimented with, and then I started crunching and adding different things. So yeah, just a little bit of that, it gives you that extra present, that extra humph. But then I felt like I still needed something else on that lower portion of it. So let's see with this very simple parameter what the boom does. Now we're talking. Now we have this enhancement that really brings out that whole character and that lower portion of the kick necessary to fill that entire low end that is not being currently occupied by an, any base or whatnot. And last but not least, a little bit of tone control in here as well. Because this was a track that was sent to me in stereo, instead of just dropping at the center because I wanted to be a main character in this thing, I open it up three and three. 
but I'm making sure that everything below 84 hertz, it's remaining completely monophonic and everything else opens up. This is just a decision I make because of the fact that the kick is so alone for the first half of the song. Tone control is just an amazing, really simple plugin for this. Dime, dime, por qué yo, por qué yo sigo extrañando tu amor, que extraño tu amor. Dime, dime, por qué yo, por qué yo, no. You see how it focuses that kick on right at the center. And last but not least, because as the song progresses, then probably in this section, for example. So I need to make sure that the kick remains at that same level of importance that when it was all by itself. And for this, I created this pretty cool side chain, which is going to be linked to the bass. So this is why the bass and the kick need to go together and you always got to be thinking about it. So I'm just sending a little bit of the side chain information. Basically, I'm routing the entire signal of the kick pre-fader, just a teeny tiny to the bass and you're going to notice what I'll do. So in here, first of all, I have tone control for that bass. Let's see how it plays with and without it. So I have that extra boost at 200 hertz just to give it a lot more presence. I'm making sure that while I'm doing this boost, I am also hearing the kick so it's not occupying the same space as the kick. And check out how I made this dip around like 1.75. And that dip is because that is the high portion of the kick that I wanted to cut through. So I'm doing this yin and yang philosophy where I'm like boosting what I feel it's important from that band of that bass, but at the same time, I'm, I'm making a dip so that the higher portion of the kick and the snare can cut through. So after this, I'm gonna be dropping this pretty cool plugin. And this is the one where I'm dropping the side chain. So this is a really, really complete compressor that allows you to do really crazy things. Plus it has a, a little bit of this color, which also provides really interesting things. So check it out. So as you can see in here, what it's happening, I'm basically compressing this bass. And as I am compressing the bass, the kick signal is triggering the compressor. So the compressor is dipping the bass really fast when the kick comes in, but really then it shots off. So then the bass sort of like does this like interaction of, of back and forth, back and forth with the kick. And it's fundamental because it's basically what, what builds the beat for me. You see how it's sort of like there is this interaction back and forth, back and forth coming from the kick. That is because I'm doing this with this compressor. Highly recommended for that. Very smart compressor, very fast, very transparent, and it doesn't let you crush your low end, which is something that happens a lot with compressors. And last but not least, I wanted to have a little bit more boost, a little bit more low end on that bass so it has more presence and it has more humph. And I'm clipping it a little bit with this basement, which is also pretty smart. I did this by hand, by tweaking around or so, and, and check out how much body we gain from this kick before and after. <laughs> So yeah, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. I've seen other videos where people tend to over-process the bass and do all these crazy things. And I always say it's just about knowing what the real interaction between bass and kick do and the function these two elements have in the mix. After that, you can really solve it if you're really smart and you know your plugins. And these three plugins are quite amazing for that. Then after I have this, I mean, I have the vocals, I have the bass and I have the kick. Then it's just a matter of figuring out how much louder I want them. And literally everything else usually on my beat is muted while I'm doing this. I have the vocal, I have the kick, I have the bass, I let it run. Usually in sections like this one, like the hook, where all these elements are going to be present. And literally after that, I start dropping in everything else. That is why I'm making sure that I'm not over compressing my way into... <laughs> You see that compressor is barely moving and it's just pushing those peaks here and there, but it's adding body and presence to the mix. And 
and I always say this, set your compressors so that you feel the groove of the song. You see, when the bypass is off, it's on. It just feels like everything is there. When I put it on, it's making the song dance. That's how I feel it. So set your compressors, but what you feel works for the dancing of the song, the flow of the song, not by what you read in the manuals and you read on your books and you read on some other blogs about the mathematics about compressors. That is the wrong way of thinking about it. Again, I'm using the black box just for tone control. I love this mid-range glow, which I'll be tweaking here and there as I am mixing, but mainly I have it on and I am mixing to that thing going into the compressor. I always have this uh, thing on, as I explained, the true peak, so I am not clipping on my way out, but everything else is fine. I can drop the level down a little bit in case, just so I feel that in case I am overdoing it because I have everything else off. You can move this. Just remember that if you change the volume on your master, you're avoiding clipping, but at the same time, mind that you're watching your SPL meter and you're having enough dynamic range to build into later, okay? So moving forward for that, it just really seriously becomes pretty straightforward. If you see mutes turning on and off in this, is because there are automated mutes that come from production. So that's it. I just wanted to say that. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'll show you what else I did. So this is the snare. It's pretty straightforward as well. A little bit of tone control, nothing too fancy. Oh, but there's something else, yes. Uh, I also have this refinement, which really helps with that harshness. I'm just doing tone control, but I am avoiding harshness so it doesn't get too bright in and makes you go like this. It damps that high mid pretty well. I said this by adding a little bit of saturation and a little bit of dynamic. So it's controlling that 1.5 to 4K, which really is harsh. I always recommend that you do that. But then you see the send that I have here, the Big Al. So I have a parallel bus with the Big Al again set to mix all the way in. And then just a little bit of EQ. I said this so I have a little bit of tone control and it's not messing up with my kick. And then I'm sending. So check it out what it does. This parallel compression is awesome with the Big Al because it's saturation, but it's going parallel. So it's a great way to make your snare sound louder without actually having to do a lot of processing. Right? It's pretty cool. So let's keep moving forward. So then mainly at this stage of my signal, I basically start dropping in all the plugins and also on the master. And I'm also watching. And again, I know that I'm clipping. That's why. I'll drop my master again so that I am not clipping because I know that I'm hitting that out really hard. Cool. Moving forward then, after I've done that, same with the claps, having that parallel buzz with the clap is another way to gain gain a little bit of depth and a little bit of extra push to that. I'm also doing with this, I love this for claps. I don't know why, but the sound of the SSL 4000 on the BX is great for claps. And I even said it so that you can see the expander going back and forth. It's just for claps and snaps, having the expander doing this sort of helps you like enhance that snapping S, which I love, highly recommend it. And then I'm also dropping into the big Al send, so it cuts through the mix when it's needed. What else do I have? I have SSL 9000 for the percussion. You'll be able to access all of this. You'll be able to see in depth what I've done with the EQ, but you can see it's very tamed, it's very moderate and mild. Just trying to take care of the percussion and then just enhancing because there is it's a loop with a lot of elements. There you go. Super easy, super straightforward. It works pretty well with all the other elements. And then for the synth, 
So this is the synth without plugins. It already comes with a added delay. So I wanted to make sure when I added the, the 9000 that I am working with that delay into consideration. See, so with this compression, I am actually making it so that it sounds louder than it is. I love for that this guitar chunks for some reason. Every time I have this like snappy like chunks effect, I drop it and then I tweak it because I know for some reason, whatever the combination that they design on this, everything is tweaked here. But you can start from there and you'll know that the chunkiness, right, of the it's going to make everything feel brighter and wider. And then the delay is going to get bigger, which I love. Cool. And then also on top of everything else, I have the BX Opto. Opto compressors are able to catch fast transients and then sort of dive into them very smoothly. I like them for this type of chunky sounds again. What else then for the piano? Oh, the piano did a really cool thing. So I have, again, my beautiful friend, the uh, SSL 9000 for color and whatnot. So see, you see already it has this like flowing motion here and there. I am using the SSL just to enhance color and tone and whatnot. And then on top of that, I added again the impulse shaper, the envelope, and, and check out what it did. So it's just helping all of those really like stingy frequencies to cut through in a much smarter way. And then everything else is built up and it has a lot more body. And then after that, that same delay at eighth notes that I was using for the vocals, I added it so that it lingers. See, so it creates this sort of like bouncing effect that because it's like dun, 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 right? The delay is doing that. So it's, it, it just creates that great flowy tone that works really well with the synth. Because it was like do, 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 do. And then from the synth, the piano goes dun, dun, dun. But the delay is going dun, 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 dun. So it's like sticking through everywhere. That's pretty cool. I like that. The plugs and the guitars, same thing. Tone control at first. Let's see. For some reason, I love console N for electric guitars. It has a tone that is just great. And I even added the lead guitars and start tweaking it from there because it has this like raspiness. Like it reminds me of like rah, 80s guitar kind of thing. So I use this plugin first for tone control and compression. So the guitar is much more forward. But then I thought, like, let's go all the way and think like this. Is a, there's a real guitar player when they're performing this for a live audience. Then let's throw in a metal amp on top of that and tweak it. And it just gave it a new spin. So all of a sudden it has more depth. All of a sudden the tone is a lot more interesting. There's a lot more going on. I loved it. And last but not least, I wanted to, because, you know, the piano and the synth and the kick and the, and the, and the snare, they have this, but when you add a guitar like this, you want to leave room for those elements. So the Clean Sweep Pro is just a great way to have a high cut filter in there. And it's just going to get rid of that extra thing that you don't need on top because you're focusing on 6K, you're focusing on 10K, which is that high portion of the content information on those guitars. And you're going to leave those very, very high extra added information for the vocals to shine through and the percussive elements. You see, by doing that roll off, I'm basically controlling that extra that happens way up there that is messing up with everything else. So use low pass filters or high cut filters. 
because they're really going to improve how clean your sound goes in those higher frequencies. For those next element is the piano chords are very simple stabs. So piano big balls for that, call it a day, tone control and compression, nothing else, nothing fancy. And that's about it. I mean, that is my train of thought. And then it's just a matter of organizing all of the elements. So when I've worked my way through all of the vocals, then it's just a matter of leveling everything out. And then because I have the compressor, I'm focusing on just building this mix. So I know it's not loud enough, but it's grooving enough. And that groovingness helps me realize what I'm eventually going to be able to build up as far as loudness goes. So let's check out how I am right now. <laughs> So see, there is already some gain reduction going on in there in my true peak limiter. That is why it's really important to have it there. I have it set at minus 0 0.03. And then as we move forward, I already had some true peaks going on. You see, it's on the positive th side of things. But because I still have more plugins to drop, then I'm going to be able to know how to control. And also my master is at minus 5.3. So it's a relation between being really loud but your peaks don't have to be at zero or plus zero just to be loud. I'm being really loud right now and I can be louder even. I am controlling my peaks as I am building up my mix. So next up, I always do a little bit of tone control for my mix because I'm already happy with what I've got. So again, I dropped this preset mastering pop and I love how the Amic has this, like this blend, like this obviously that neat tone to sort of glues everything together as any EQ if that is a thing. But I'm definitely dropping a little bit of the gain in there. So building up that gain staging as I'm going through, I'm adding a little bit of that mid portion around 800. Then I'm controlling, I'm also adding a little bit of 50 something so that when that kick and that tone come in, it's just that added shape. Yeah, I have a lot of that going on in that lower portion. Portion. Usually when I EQ, I'm not really focused on like, I, I just need to be really precise. I'm just thinking about what sounds best. I'm thinking about and I'm listening and I'm also going back and forth. I'm obviously checking my SPL Hawkeye just to see where I'm at. See, I'm, I'm like blasting this right now, but this is going to get control. And then this is the overall reset. Uh, history of what I'm working, but I'm, I always have my eye on the meter and I'm always checking. I love, there is this beautiful thing that happens between 46 hertz and like 63 hertz with the kick and the bass, which I recommend that you pay high attention to. So when you have a spectrogram like this one, where you can really pay attention to everything that you're doing while you're mixing. And also a cool thing, I don't have anything loaded right now, but when you have something loaded, just make sure that you use this section because it's pretty cool. You're able to listen to things that you have mastered, things that have been mastered that you've mixed or commercial references and you can listen them by band frequencies. So when you're in doubt, especially with the low end, which is so tricky, you're watching your SPL meter and you're making sure that everything is just looking pretty straightforward. But you're also watching over here and you're comparing your spectrum of whatever you have as your reference with whatever you have on your side, right, for this mix in particular. And with these filters, you're able to hear, see how it changes between bands. So you're able to hear what's happening on your mix on that range, as opposed to whatever commercial reference you have going on. And that is just a great tool to understand how great mixers achieve things by listening to what they do in different bands. So that's why I keep plugins open the entire time, just so that I'm comparing and I'm watching and I'm just making sure that everything is correct on my end. So I'm building this tone control all the time with the EQ. Next up, I am going to be setting up the master desk. I think it provides a great feel. It's just a great mastering compressor. And the fact that you can know where you're ballparking your mix in terms of dynamic range is just a great tool. The tone control and this, as I've said before, I love this on most of the brain work stuff. You also have your stereo enhancer, which I'm not doing in here. I started out with the hip hop light 
Comp Turbo because I felt it was a great starting point. And then from then I took off and then I played around again as I am building my gain structure. And that's why you'll see the volume is at minus five. Yeah, so you can tell there is a big difference right there when you drop it and it just sounds great. And then I'm making sure that I am adding by taste the tone uh, parameters just to see that it's actually building proactively towards the mix that I'm creating. Also, I'll be doing this by going back and forth from my references. So this is why this section of the master I'm creating and on the last stage, once I am happy with all of the levels and the interactions that are happening in the mix. This is the way I work. It doesn't mean that you guys have to work like that, but it works for me really well. One thing that I was noticing overall, again, is that I was getting a little harsh because I am compressing and compressing and compressing, right? And I'm creating saturations at different points with the Big Al and with as a parallel bus, a separate parallel bus is actually going mono, which I didn't show you before. But yeah, because I'm creating all this added saturation, I just want to make sure that I drop this so I'm removing that harshness away from my mix. So when finally I hit the limiter, that harshness is going to be controlled. So I start out with this MS Band Loud Proud White. <laughs> Love the names. And then as you can see, then I've tweaked manually. And basically what I'm doing here, I'm doing separate controls for the limiting on the low band that's going on the mid section. Right? And I'm treating the highs in a much different ways. And this is a way to achieve loudness. I'm separating the mids in different bands and I'm treating them differently. It's like it pushes forward. And last but not least, I'm also doing a separate limiting on the side, adding different levels of these axle enhancement, also changing the way I have set the threshold. And also I am adding the side chain preference in here. So the side chain, what it does is that it's taking a little bit of what's happening between what's coming in from the mid and what's coming in from the side. And it's applying that percentage to side chain how much the gain reduction is applied on the side limiting of my mix. So you're going to notice how, because it's getting that mid information, that is the side chain that triggers the threshold. So you're going to feel that that's why it becomes so groovy because the groove, it's 68% of the mid that is triggering the limiting that is happening on the side. And that's the way I build instead of my mix being sort of like a pyramid or like all the mid content information it's cutting through. I'm doing this because I am getting super loud towards the side. And there you go. I have a little bit of gain boost in the end just to compensate for everything else. And I'm obviously watching what's happening on the limiter all the time. So all of these tweaks, I'm going back and forth, all of these different plugins that help me control my gain. But the last point is that I am definitely trying to avoid distortion. I'm trying to gain loudness. And all of these tools are incredible for that. And you can also solo, not only here in the Tropic limiter, but you can also solo all the way here. So you can be certain that what you're doing is great. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the process and you enjoyed the tutorial. If you want to download the multi-track for different DAWs, make sure you visit the Plugin Alliance website and you will be able to download everything there. Also, make sure you subscribe to the Mega Bundle because in there you will find all of the plugins that we used for this session. Thank you very much. I'll catch you in the next time. Bye-bye.